In this lesson, I'm going to show you a great way to get started with improvising on guitar. This backing track we're going to be using has a very common chord progression with a slow tempo that is perfect for exploring different scale options and musical ideas. This is very exciting because you are in the driver's seat. You can play as slow or as fast as you want. You can play something more melodic or you can play something with more of a bluesy feel. By the end of this video, you will have the tools and the options to be as creative as you want to be. So grab your guitar and let's get into it. Number one, so what is improvising on guitar? I did a Google search and here's the first thing that comes up. Improvisation is a term used by musicians of all skill levels to describe making it up on the spot. Whether you're playing jazz guitar, blues guitar, rock guitar, country guitar, pop guitar, or any other genre of music, improvisation is an essential skill when it comes to unlocking your creativity on the fretboard. I love this definition. What I would add is this. When you're improvising, your mind is free and you're not focused on trying to figure out someone else's solo. You are simply following a chord progression and you have the freedom to be creative and play what feels and sounds good to you. This is perfect for working out your technical skills and technique as well as developing your own style as a guitar player. The first step is to figure out the chords and chord progression that you will be soloing or improvising over. So let's take a look at this backing track. So this track is in the key of C major. It starts out with a C major chord, then it goes to an A minor chord, goes to an F major chord, and then it goes to a G major chord. So this track is in 4-4 time and each chord gets four beats. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that pattern just keeps repeating itself. I feel like this is an excellent track for a beginner or anyone to improvise over because it is so basic. However, I'm going to show you how you can make it as simple or as complex as you want. Number three, the next important thing I like to figure out is does the track or chord progression have a major, minor, or a bluesy feel? What I love about this backing track is that it can have a major, minor, or a bluesy feel all depending on how and what you play and of course the scales that you use. Number four, so let's start out playing with a major or melodic feel. We're in the key of C major so all of the notes of the C major scale will work so just a quick side note, for this lesson, I'm not going to break down all of the scale patterns, but I will leave a link in the description for a video about a killer scales app that I use and recommend, and it's an excellent resource for breaking down all of the scales that we're gonna talk about in this lesson, as well as showing these scales in every key. Here are some examples of the C major scale. So if we look at the pattern starting on the sixth string, you can start with the eighth fret right there. That's your C note, that's your one, and this would be an Ionian mode scale pattern. Starting with your D, which is your two, here's your Dorian. Starting with your three, which is your E, this is your Phrygian. Starting with your G right here, this is your Mixolydian. And then starting with the A, this is your A Aeolian. Which can also be called your natural minor scale. Number five, now let's play with a minor or a bluesy feel. We're in the key of C major, but always remember that every major key has a relative minor key. 
Also know that every scale number has a type of chord that goes along with it. I want to show you this chart and notice how the one, four, five are all major chords. The two, three, and six are all minor chords. The six is always the relative minor. So in the key of C major, our six is the A minor chord. So now we can play an A minor scale because we are really still playing all the notes in the C major scale. But now we can have more of a minor feel, especially every time we play over the A minor chord. Now it gets really fun because we're going to play with a bluesy feel. We're simply going to play the A minor pentatonic scale with the added blues note, or we can call it the A blues pentatonic scale. As a side note, just like C major having the A relative minor, the pentatonic scale works the same way in that A minor pentatonic and C major pentatonic scales have the exact same notes. So your A minor pentatonic looks like this. And then if you add the blues note, which is right here, right here. So we can do an extended blues scale, looks like this. So hey, let me know in the comments if this lesson is helpful for you and if you are fired up about jamming to this track. Number six, the next thing you will want to start thinking about as you practice improvising is to start training your ear to hear the different chords and play around with hitting target notes of those chords, especially the root notes. You can't go wrong with landing on the root note of each chord. But each chord actually has three target notes. That is for another lesson, but for now, just really try to use your ear to hear these notes and chord tones. Number seven, as you practice improvising, you will want to work on some important techniques that add a lot to your solos. I recommend spending the most time on bends, vibrato, and hammer-ons and pull-offs. So for your bends, you just want to make sure and bend up to the correct note. So if you're playing this note here and bending up a whole step, which would be two frets, you'd be hitting that note from here to here. So when you're bending strings, you want to focus on muting all the other strings and making it sound smooth. Notice you can bend up and bring it right back down. There's all kinds of different ways of playing vibrato. If you watch all your great players, they all have kind of like a signature vibrato um, style, if you will. But whatever it is you want to do, whether it's this or this or whatever you want to come up with, whatever it is, that's going to be something that you're going to want to work on. But it all comes down to playing smooth, making things sound really nice, muting the other strings so you're not getting any extra string noise. And the thing about vibrato is you can bend and then when you bend up to a note, you hit the note first, then you start using vibrato. So 
So the next thing is hammer-ons and pull-offs, and I love playing with a combination of alternate picking and hammer-ons and pull-offs. So if I wanna play this lick right here, that's all alternate picking right there, picking every note. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. If I wanted to play that using hammer-ons and pull-offs, it'd sound like this. Sometimes when you do hammer-ons and pull-offs, you're gonna pick a note and then do a hammer-on and pull-offs. Pick, hammer-on, pull-off. Pick, hammer-on, pull-off. One of the things I love to do is walk up and down a scale. So if you want to play this C major scale starting right here, you could do something like this. End up on this C right here, and then go right back down. So hey, I had a blast making this video lesson, and I really hope you're inspired to start jamming to this track and get excited about improvising. As mentioned, I have a video about a killer app I have on my iPhone and my iPad. It will really help you learn and memorize the skills we talked about. So click the video on your screen or the one I'll link below. Keep rocking and I'll see you in the next video.